my channel where I make videos about tech, unboxing, product reviews, events, and some fun stuff. And for today's video, I will be talking about week one of CS50's Introduction to Computer Science course. And if you are interested in my journey in taking this course and also interested in taking that course as well, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started with the video. So this is week one of CS50's Introduction to Computer Science course. So this course actually starts with week zero and if you want to check that out, the link is in my description box and you can watch how my week zero has been. So in this video series, I just wanted to share with you guys my journey in taking this course, if I'm able to finish and all of what the course has to offer. So you will also have an idea if you're interested in taking this course. So week one is about C and this is getting more technical this week compared to the more enjoyable lecture and project in week zero where uh, you're where you're gonna be asked to make a game, a story, or something interactive in a software called Scratch. So week one now is gonna be more technical as it's gonna talk about more programming terms and more software terms. I admit that it's also a little harder compared to week zero which was just really the basic and just introduction to what the course is all about but this one is very specific to the technical aspects of programming itself and for this week we are taught to use the C programming language so week one is all about the C language and there is still the video lecture from David which is about two hours there is also more videos this time, short videos about certain topics so you could get more details and explanations on the different topics that uh, David really didn't expand further during the two hour lecture. So they also provide Google Slides and PDF if you want to read more about the lecture if you want to go back to the topics that was talked about in the video lecture it is also available you could also print this out as well so I think that's another good resource then after the lecture is finished there is also lab exercises for C language coding that you can do so you could practice more and they also give you a lot of instructions and what commands to run for the IDE that they will have you using so it is very well documented there's also a video walkthrough to help you out if you are struggling with the code or stuck with something and there's also some hints or clues if you are having a hard time finishing your code then they also have you test your code if you have the expected results and you can submit it by following the following by following the instructions for week one there's two labs that you're supposed to do and there's also a lot of instructions for the labs and these are just exercises and after you're finished with the labs there's the problem sets or the project which are more challenging than the labs so you can pick one of each if, if you are less comfortable or more comfortable with the language you could choose the harder one so you only have to submit two of this and they're also very well documented with all the instructions and with the video walkthrough and all of the guide and the hints that you would need to submit the projects also when you're done submitting your projects you could also track all of your submissions and check on your current progress and also check the grades that you have so in order for you to get a certificate you should submit all of the projects and labs required and you should get at least 70 percent for each lab activities or project 
So, so far I have done week zero and week one. So for every week, there is a tracking for your progress. And that's how you can check what your grades are. If you need to work more on your project or submit it again, you can submit as many times as you want until you get the final grade that you need. So for this week, you're going to be taught a lot of programming terms which you might or might have not encountered before depending on what your programming background is. But you are going to learn about functions, arguments, variables, how to write a simple code, what the syntax is for C, and, and what the difference between source code and machine code is. So you're going to learn a lot more technical concepts in this week compared to last week. So to be completely honest, after I finish the lecture and I work on the problem sets, the different labs and projects that you are supposed to do and submit, I really struggled a little bit with C because, well, it's my first time to use the C language and it's not very user friendly and it's hard to compile it and look into the errors as well because if you are a non-programmer or if you're coming from something easier like Python, you're not used to having to code everything uh, from scratch or manually so that's what C is. C has a much harder syntax and it's very picky because it needs a semicolon every after each line of command or code and you have to compile it whenever you make a change for example you are missing like a semicolon at the end you have to compile it every time so it picks up the changes that you have made before executing and so it's kind of hard if you are making a lot of changes and if you are trying a lot of different things to make your code work so yeah for this week i was really struggling with the lab especially doing the mario lab it is a fun project to do but i kind of got stuck in something uh, i got it on python but it's really a lot a little harder to do it in C because uh, Python's syntax is easier, it's very readable and very straightforward whereas in the C there there's a lot of things you have to do from scratch and I was totally not used to it. So you just have to practice and there's a lot of hints anyway and like a video walkthrough for all of the labs and you can also research as well and there's also and collaboration with classmates are also encouraged if you are working in labs and projects. My only issue about taking this course is you have to do a lot of research on your end. I just think that in the lecture, they're not giving a lot of uh, practice problems or activities for you to do. There's only one lab, then you move on to like a harder, more complex project. So, And the, the examples in the lecture are really simple and easy compared to the lab and the project you have to do. So on your end, you have to research and practice and practice uh, to be able to grasp the concept and i believe that the best way to learn is by doing it so just keep doing it just be consistent and just have and really have the discipline and set time for you to study because you really want to catch up on everything and also the submission of the projects and labs are at the end of the year or at the end of the course you don't have to the that there's no deadline for it every week so if you choose to just uh, study the lectures first then do the labs after you obviously have the option to do that but for me I just wanna uh, I just wanna finish it all every week so it doesn't pile up on me and I don't have to do all the projects at once because I think that would be very stressful especially if you are a programming or coding and for me I just want to do it week by week because because what you're learning from the previous week is supplementary for what you're gonna learn uh, the next week so I think uh, just taking it one step at a time is what's what works for me so that's it for this week's recap and I hope you learned something from it thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in week two